I'm Paul. Hi, I'm Diane. And we are Car Zombies. In part one, I explained why I'm fixing my brakes. We covered the tools we needed, the parts we needed, the supplies we needed, and we got the car jacked up and the wheel off. I cleaned the calipers and the rotors to remove some of the brake dust and grime. I removed the lock pin and spring that held the brake pads, and I pried the brake pads away from the rotor and pulled them out. The last task was for Di to remove the caliper. Lift up. She tried to do it with the little ratchet, but she couldn't get them to budge. We needed a breaker bar, and the new one it. we bought wouldn't work with the new socket that we bought. We left off with us running to Home Depot to buy the breaker bar. We got it! <laughs> yeah, your tool. Do I lift up? Yep. Oh, I got it loose. <laughs> you get excited, huh? I want to get this off. I see why now you like uh, have the tools, right? Tools for the job. No, but you're going to need the bunch of cord. You're going to need the hook part hanging down oh, somehow. Okay. I was wondering if I can just keep tying it like this. Let's just use the wire. All right. Oh, that's nice wire. Yeah. And I lift up, right? Yeah. And you, you, you don't have your breaker bar, so it may be hard. You're right. <laughs> you need your breaker bar? Yeah. I'm trying to cut corners for you. Well, I thought it was worth a try. I, swear that I can feel it every single time, but I can't seem to get this stupid wrench on it. You're close. You're on it. I'm on it. You got enough to go up? Watch out. You're going to hit that fender. I got it. You broke it? I got it loose. Oh, I think I can. I don't know. It seems to get tighter. Or well, maybe I'm tightening it Remember, again. Remember, you turn it like you were the yes. breaker bar. You're going the wrong way? Yes. <laughs> oh, no. Do you want me to hold it again? Got it. Oh, got it. Now try to get it on that hook if you can. Want me to help you with that? I don't think that's it's pretty heavy. It is pretty heavy? Yeah, I here, don't let me help you get it on that one thing. Right, so let's take this around here. I don't know if that will hold. That's sure, sure it will. Yeah, that'll hold. So like just to two on the bottom. Just enough so that it looks like it's holding it in a little bit. So if the rotor falls, it won't just collapse on the ground. I think that will hold. All right. Oh, you mean like that? Yeah, it does turn. Okay. I removed the rotor's lock bolt. Do I have to press down or anything? At least this one I could see. I never went the wrong direction on it. Oh, okay. So loosen it? Yeah, I think you remove it. It may be hard to break too. Is it hard to break? No, I got it. Already? Yeah. Wow, cool. What are you thinking? There, it's pretty on, pretty much on there. All right. Try hitting yeah. it with your little hammer. So let's try hitting it with a bigger hammer. Seems like I'm gonna. Bust Why don't we it. treat it as if it's an emergency brake problem? Okay. okay. Do you want to make it tighter for you? Oh, I see it. Okay. Now you're turning top to bottom. Is that what I said? Top to bottom. Both the video I researched and in the Haynes manual said that the parking brake may be holding the roller on. So from outside to inside is probably what it is. This made us think we needed to loosen the parking brake first. To loosen the parking brake, I had to line up a wheel bolt hole to a gear on the other side and use a screwdriver to notch the gear in a certain direction. But the rotor was still locked on the wheel hub and still wouldn't come free. We just wasted 10 minutes on the parking brake and even worse, it's now in an unusable state because it's all the way loose. Then Paul used a hammer himself. A sledgehammer kind of hit is what it needs. Uh-huh. Oh, we got off. That's it. That's it. It just popped right out. Do you think it was because we loosened an emergency brake or do you think it was? I really don't know. Oh, darn. I wish I did, but we know to hit it pretty hard next time. Oh, wow, cool. All right. Oh, I see the, the, the little gear for the emergency brake. Yeah, you see what you were doing. Yeah, right there. Let me see, I want to get close. 
Oh, you got the rotor in your hands even. Yes. Look at you. Congratulations. Thanks. But you, it was because of your sledge. While Di was cleaning the rust off the hub, I studied the parking brake so I could try to explain it to the camera. This part and this part gets pushed away from this gear every time it's clicked. As I go this way, it is expanding these two rings. That forces these to hit the rotor, which is hanging over the top of that. When we were trying to get through it, we went through the lug nut hole and turned it this way, which pulled these two parts together. By pulling them together, that meant this and this doesn't rub against the rotor. That's how the emergency brake works. That makes sense. Got it cleaned on the outside now? I'm pretty clean. All right, if it's too heavy, I'll help you. I put the new rotor on to make sure it fit. Fits on just like nicely like that. And then I took it back off and put the anti-seize compound okay. on the hub. So it's right on the outside here? Yeah. Be good to me, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. To you? It looks great. Whoa. I put the rotor on. I put the Loctite thread locker on the tip of the rotor's lock bolt. Here's your lid. I didn't expect, I thought it was going to be thick. Can I take, can I use a paper towel? Yeah, just use paper towels to clean that up. I didn't know that either. Never used it before. It's really thin. Then I screwed it in with the ratchet. Uh, do you know how to change the ratchet to go the other way? No. Um, flip that little switch in the back. Oh. I go like this? Yeah, that looks like it's going the other way. How much do I tighten it? To 10 nanometers. How do I know it's 10? Um, when you get it kind of just starting to get tight, stop. Okay, it's tight. Okay, now the way the torque wrench works is we set it to the right number, 10 na uh, newton meters. Huh? And then Here's the torque wrench. Oh, it's a nice plastic thing. Look at this. It even has a... Um... That's instructions? No, it has a calibration. <laughs> no, it's been calibrated. So oh, you, wow. They tell you what, how close it is. Certificate of calibration. Yeah, so it was good the day we bought it. Or the day they packed it. So how many newton meters? That's foot pounds. You're doing newton meters, and you're going to try to get 10, and this doesn't have 10. Oh no. This starts at 13.6. Let's see if the neighborhood dude has a torque wrench. There. That's 10. Now what will happen is you'll hear one click and that'll say you're done. Oh, okay. As soon as you hear one click, you're done. So how do I turn it? Uh, wait, first make sure that it's ratcheting the right direction. Take it back off and just try turning the tops like you're gonna wanna turn it. You want it to go clockwise and ratchet when you're going non-clockwise. That's correct. All right, you got it the right way. Okay, so I go down. Around. Yeah, it, it's going back up. Remember how when we took things off, we yeah. went down? Yeah, all right, so I go down. Yeah, those clicks you ignore, but listen, real close for click the other way. But it's it's gonna, it's resisting now. Yeah, does it click? No. All right, go another time around. Did it click? No, my hands clicked. There's no clicking. Okay, that that may not be a good ratchet. Oh boy, I wish I knew if that was too much or not. Let me try just to see what I could feel. We should put a, a couple of lug bolts in so you can grab it. Please. Now hang on to it. Okay. Ready? Mm-hmm. You don't want to do too much. There, it clicked. Did oh, you good. see that? Yeah, I did. That's... I just needed a little, a little bit of brawn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, just a little bit. But that's it. That's the click we were waiting for. So you're at 10 newton meters. Oh, good. Congratulations. We then spend about 20 minutes resetting the parking brake. Okay, so bottomed up. Yep. First, I tried tightening the gear, then Paul tried tightening it. I was going to say, it's getting worse. Eventually, we got the gear turned the right direction. We got the parking brake pedal to go down the way it used to and the wheel didn't rub against the parking brake when we turned it. Finally, it works. So is there anything we learned here? <laughs> well, this is what I was worried would be the hardest part about the whole thing is the emergency brake. And yes. it was, you really need to know which way you're clicking it and not forget which way you're clicking yes. it. 
And I agree. I like how we, you could kind of go for feel too, because I noticed you had like, it would just go click, 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 and it was just too few. We know yes. we wanted to go click. That's what it did. And then it needs to lock it, and it did. Yes, and also when we turned it, you couldn't hear scraping. All right, now let's go to the next step. Okay. Next, we needed to pry open the caliper so it fit the new brake pads, which are much thicker than our old worn out pads. Caliper pry tool didn't work for my brakes. I had to put the caliper back on, but I lost one of the caliper bolts. Paul said to check the caliper. Oh, in here? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's there. Okay, take it out. <laughs> you do see it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I put the Loctite on the bolt, set it aside, and worked on getting the caliper free from the wire. I cleaned the inside of the caliper with the brake cleaner. I helped her start the bolts. Notice how easily I can turn the bolts as I'm putting them in. I tightened the bolts with the 16 millimeter ratchet. Nano, nano, nano. And there's a 54 point three well, on this, which is real close. By loosening it? <laughs> Probably was loosening it. Did you change your wrench to go the other direction? No, I didn't. I can't I can't do anything right now. I can't get it off. It's stuck. You're trying to take it off? Yeah, because I can't. Oh, that the wrench you're trying to take off. Because I have to. Flip the, the switch in the back? Is there a switch in the back? Yeah, you got to flip the switch in the back. I can't get it off. Yeah. So you got it. Here, I flipped the switch. You did flip it. I just flipped it. Okay. I'm not sure if it's going into the hole. It's kind of tight. It, I don't think it is, is it? I was so confused, I thought maybe we had the wrong bolt holes. I have to use a socket wrench to take it out, but I could hand tighten it in. That does not make sense. Once I got the bolts out and I looked at it, there were only two holes there for us to go through. It's screwing in the only spot it can go. These were the right holes. That's so I tried putting it in again and hand it tightening it. Like only this time I couldn't even hand tighten them. It was help. really hard to turn the screws. I had to use the ratchet just to put the bolts in. You're positive that's in. Later I learned that this whole thing was because of how Loctite worked. I always thought Loctite was just like it created friction or something. But having never used it, I didn't realize that it really is a form of super glue. We were actually gluing the bolts inside the bolt hole. That explains why you have to break the bolts with a breaker bar to take them out. Also, the glue sets when there's no oxygen. So as it happens, we put the bolts in, it started to set, and then we started trying to unscrew them and screw them back in while it was already setting. I'm going down. So it was really hard to move the bolts you're after that. You're not trying that. to break it unlocked, you're trying to lock it. Remember? That's right. Looks like you're getting it tighter. Yeah, now it is. Yeah, it just took a while to get to the tight part. Once you leave it for now, do the bottom for a little while. It's getting late. <laughs> getting late, it's late. Paul put a 16 millimeter socket in the torque wrench and set it to 55 Newton meters. And we're gonna go for one click on the way down. I didn't realize it at the time, but there's actually a lock button on the torque wrench. I remember it was really tight. I don't think I can get this. No, I'm just cur curious. Did you turn this handle at all? No. So when Diane used it, it lost not its setting. I, and I had to fix it before I could torque the bolt. It's not set. That's the right setting. Lost its setting a little bit. There's the click. Oh, nice. Uh, and my man. turn. <laughs> <laughs> well, 54 foot pounds. Or Newton it's meters. It's half of me, right? No. <laughs> I don't know, but when we're done, we'll look at what the other side says the foot pounds is. Oh, you just about had it again. <laughs> of course. And the other side says 40 foot pounds. We tried using the brake spreader tool again. It didn't work. So we tried with the screwdriver. It didn't work either. It was late, so we gave up and decided to figure it out in the morning. So we got to find a way to pry those. Why don't we make that our project tomorrow morning? Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's a new day and we're ready to continue working on our car. Yeah, we needed a tool at the end of the night. We didn't have one, so we had to go buy it. What we bought was pry bars. So now we can maybe get those caliper pistons pried apart so we can put the new brake pads in. Yes, I know. I hope it works. Fingers crossed. <laughs> okay, let's get to it, Di. Okay. We're gonna run out of blue paper towels. I should have bought some today. I ain't gonna get you any oh, peanuts. It's really easy. 
What? It was really easy. You already pried it open? I just kind of tested it and it was like prying open. Really? Seriously? Yeah. After all that Am last night? It? Where are you prying it? From the rotor? I'm pressing on this and I'm pressing on this and I'm going inward. That one goes in real easy. Oh, you got the other one moving too now. You got them both in pretty good? That one's in pretty good. Why don't you one. try putting that brake pad in see what it feels like. All right, let me try. Yep, it comes in. What about the other one? This one will go in fine too, I can tell. This one's got Mercedes on the top or on the bottom. Is there a way you put them in? There's an R and then a Mercedes. It doesn't matter. It just matters that the brake pad part's against the brake and the metal's against the caliper. Oh, that's all that matters? Yeah. Okay. Are they both in? They're both in. Next, I put the brake cream on the back of the brake pad so they won't squeal. Yeah, that looks good. I think that's how you want it a little bit. Yeah, that's that. what I'm thinking too. You don't want it squealing, so. Yeah, definitely don't want any squealing. The friction serve, it's on the outside, so that's good. Okay. Okay, next, I think you want to clean off the rotor. Boy, we sure got it dirty, didn't we? Mm-hmm. It feels like, to me, mm -hmm. it just scratched the paint off. Yeah, that's what it but seems. But what we need to do mm -hmm. is we probably need to do it, the prying before we take the old rotor off. So we're scratching the old rotor instead of the new So one. that looks pretty good, Di. Okay, so I remember it was kind of cupped, you said, in the wheel yeah, size down. Yeah, it was like it was cupping the wheel, wasn't it? Yeah. And the big side down, yeah. Like that. That looks perfect. It yeah. looks natural too, doesn't it? Hey, doctor, where's my pin? Or nurse. Look, <laughs> whoa, <laughs> there you go. Thank you. You want to go in pointy side first? Okay. Do you follow kind of what I'm saying? Like this. Yeah. And then you use a hammer to try to get it in. You probably have to, yeah. Do you want me to help you hold it or something? No, I think I can. Just be careful about that brake line. Oh, it's further back this yeah. way. Yeah. No wonder. Oh, you were going in that other spot. Yes. There was another hole. All right, you gotta get that spring in there. Yes. I was in the wrong hole. I was like, there's no way that could fit in that hole. You put the spring by you, by the hammer. Oh, there it is. Okay, cup side down, fin down. Now that makes sense. Now I push the spring in, right? Yeah, and it goes to the top of those brake pad holes. Is that working so far? It goes here, right in there, right? Like that. Is it fighting you? you need yeah. Hand? Yeah, I need another hand. To... Right here. You're hitting the pin now. Oh, all right. Can you press it in a little bit? Oh, there you go. Yep. Probably not getting through that. It's not getting through that hole. It's not getting through the big pin. Because it needs to be pressed in. Yeah. I think you have to use a hammer, hammer now. You do it. That's going through. Okay. Yep, it's going through. It's working. Where is it going to come out? It should come out right here. There we go. And we had a quarter of an inch, you said? Try it like this, all right? Mm-hmm. Yep, it's going through. It looks pretty good now. Yeah, that looks like a quarter inch. I think it could go like another sixteenth of an inch. looks good. Of I can't course. wait to do my brakes. That's, it's like I, I keep wanting to reach in and help, reach in and help. But it's like, I want to help. I really do. I like doing things myself. I'm going to make sure I got brake clean. Yes, that's the right stuff. Brake parts yeah, you want to. Actually, that's a good test because, you know, we're amateurs and if you accidentally grab the WD 40, that yes. would be a disaster, <laughs> no, wouldn't it? It would. Ooh. Whoa. That's probably enough. Just take your paper towel and wipe it all clean now. We're just trying to get off any grime that we may have left on it because we don't want our brakes to be 
oiled. Okay. So I rolled it around so the bottom is the part that was under the rotor. So make sure it's nice and clean. My belief is that brakes work even if the car isn't turned on. They're just not assisted. So I put the cap back onto the, the brake fluid reservoir and now Di's going to get in the front seat or at least put her leg in and push on the brake pedal. We're going to see if it stops. I'm going to put my gloves on and I'm going to grab that little lug nut and try to turn the wheel a little bit. Okay. And if you've stopped it, then it won't turn. Okay, so tell me when you want me to step on the brake. All right. Perfect. There's a little bit of, sounds like emergency brake rubbing. It does sound like it to me too. Why don't we try loosening that up just a hair too? Okay. Here we go again, the parking brake. Is it rubbing or is it something else? One, two, 10 minutes later, this one's tighter. The way I figure it, when the car is running, the brakes must be assisted and are somehow pulled away from the rotors when you stop pushing on the brake pedal. But because we have the car turned off and just pushed it and forced it, it's still holding on to the rotor and making it scratch. I see the scratches. You want me to help you with that? Are you determined to do it yourself? I can do it. You're so funny. Me to help you lift it? Maybe I should lift it. Yeah, I think you should lift it. It just really looks like it's heavy. It is heavy. There's a thing that you may have. This one, they probably have a roadside changing of a wheel video that tells you this. But in your pack that came with your car for your wheel, mm -hmm. there should be a long bar. Yep. See this? We put it in the top hole, or any hole for that matter. And when we put the wheel on, the wheel will hang on the bar until we can get a lug nut to kind of start lining them up the rest of the holes. I knew there was some usefulness out of that car kit. <laughs> yeah. Let's get that straight down and see if that helps. Then I turned the wheel so that the pin was on the bottom. Yep. That was a bad idea. The whole pin alignment was an area I didn't research in advance. At the top, I think for me, that would be a little easier. It turns out you're supposed to use the pin both to help you take the wheel off and to put it on. But when you're putting it on, you have to have the pin at the top at 12 o'clock for the work. And you can't let it rotate back down after the wheel is hanging on it. <laughs> Let's see if I can get that to line up to another one now. Or else it won't work. I said I'd do the heavy lifting. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> struggling to get this lined up right. It looks crooked right now. No, it's about the whole thing's about to fall off. It is definitely not going. <clears throat> you sure these wheels go in this car? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's do something different. Do me a favor, go uh -huh. in the car. Yeah. And push on the emergency brake. Okay. Now, so we have gravity working with us instead of against us. Okay. There. Now, Wow, they all look lined up. <laughs> it was just because of the emergency break? Or I don't know way? how we're going to do the fronts, but that worked for this. I think that's actually gone in. Just go ahead and throw a few in. And... Yeah. You want to do it? That was a lot easier. That way we had weight working with us instead of against us. Yeah. You go ahead and roll that other one out now. Uh, turn it. It screws in too. Oh, it screws in too. Take the uh, ratchet and just tighten them fairly tight with the ratchet. Not just enough so that they won't be loose. All right. And the final torquing will happen once more. Can you get Push the... the button. Oh, I forgot about that. Oh. And turning it right. Yep. Tightens it. You know, you probably won't get to the full torque on that because that one is 120 Newton meters. Oh yeah, there's no way. I couldn't, I couldn't loosen 40 yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I think you had me do your 10. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> that looks good. Okay. One down. Well, die. we can't lower it and test it yet until after we get the, um, the other side done. You have to do okay. two at both of them at the same time. 
Yeah. So we kind of tested it. It worked when you pumped on the brake and all. I'm pretty excited. What do you think? I think it looks like it's supposed to be, except for I'm not sure if some of the scraping, the scraping yeah, is normal. Yeah, we still normal. don't know if that's normal, but I'm pretty sure. Uh, actually, the guy at the Mercedes parts department said, when I asked him about the coating on yeah. it, he said, oh, that primer, it'll rub right off as soon as you start using your brakes. Oh, okay. So oh, I'm assuming okay. it's going to, obviously it has to rub. Yeah. And obviously you can't get everything perfectly you know, for every caliper on every car and every whatever. I mean, I don't know what the tolerances are, but just let it rub itself flat, you know? Well, I'm just glad that this is a lot better than what we had. <laughs> oh my, yeah, oh boy, did we wait too long. I yes. can't wait to see how low, it, how worn they are on the other side. Yeah, I can't wait. All right, well, let's go do the other wheel. Okay, I'm okay. ready. That's it for part two. Thanks for watching. Please like our video and subscribe to see the surprise we had when we tested it. Is it Newton or a Nano? The Newton meter. <laughs> Newton. <laughs> that, that has nothing to do with what we're doing. You're just teasing me? Yes. Okay, you're excited because you get your brakes done. I am.